When the doom claimed Valyria, the great freehold fractured into warring cities and upstart nations, ripe for the taking. Out of these swarmed the Dothraki, the horse lords of the plains who feared only defeat and dragons. And now the dragons were all gone. Under the great Karl Temu, they sacked and burnt every town and city in their path. No army could stand against them, because the Dothraki do not stand. The horse lords do not draw up battle lines or hide behind shield walls or layer themselves in armor. The Dothraki charge. Their blades are more scythe than sword, the better to cull the infantry ranks without breaking stride. Even their archers fire from horseback so that advancing or retreating, the arrows never cease. To the Dothraki, a man who does not ride is no man at all, without honor or pride. When the city of Kohor realized Kal Temu was coming, they strengthened their walls, doubled their own guards, and hired two full companies of sellswords. The Dothraki were used to glorified farmers with spears. Kohor would show them a proper army, with mounted and armored cavalry to match the horde's own. As an afterthought, the city leaders sent an envoy to Astapor to buy Unsullied. The slavers had always claimed that the Unsullied were the great Giscari legions come again. Few cared. The dragon-burned ruins of old Gis were a stark reminder that the age of the foot soldier was over. The envoy had his orders, however, and quickly bought 3,000 Unsullied for the long march back. For Unsullied do not ride. But while they marched, Karl Temu arrived at Quo Hall. I can imagine how pleased the Karl was to finally face a challenge. By the end of the battle, crows and wolves feasted on what remained of Quohor's heavy horse. All the sellswords had fled. Quohor knew that the Dothraki would very soon break through the gates to rape, slave, and burn at their pleasure. Yet the next day, Karl Temo woke to find, before the gates, 3,000 eunuchs in formation armed with only spears, shields, and spiked helms. The Unsullied had slipped past the Kull's army in the night while the Dothraki feasted. Kull Temu had many times their number and could easily have flanked the small force. But to the Dothraki, men on foot are fit only to be ridden down. Eighteen times the horse lords charged, and eighteen times the Unsullied locked their shields, lowered their spears, and held the line against 20,000 Dothraki screamers. When the Karl's archers rained arrows on them, the Unsullied lifted their shields above their heads until the squall passed. And then they held the line. In the end, only 600 Unsullied remained, but more than 12,000 Dothraki lay dead, including Karl Temu and all his sons. The new Karl led the survivors past the city gates, where one by one, each man cut off his braid and threw it down before the feet of the Unsullied, defeated and shamed forever. Since that day, the Unsullied fill the ranks of cities and households wealthy enough or desperate enough. Sellswords fight for gold, knights for glory, and Dothraki for blood. To a man, the Unsullied fight only to obey. With the right master over them, Imagine how the forces of chaos would break against their shields. The conquerors, the madmen, the usurpers.